the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. God bless you, man. I had, we had a great study today. We're talking about the fact is that, and let me see if I can bring up the uh, the slide. But the main thing is this. We need to be able to encourage one another. We really need to make sure we don't be deceived to do and go to the contrary of the doctrine of Christ. There's so many things I'm looking at in the past, and the past discrimination, everything else. It's all because people said that it's more important to, to this, be deceived. It will be to be deceived, willingly not study the word of God, willingly not understand the doctrine of Christ, and start to go after the doctrine of men. Sometimes we talk about the different political parties. We would do, we'll go with the things of a political party where it's okay to hate, it's okay to discriminate, it's okay to do all the bad things. Because you think about it, some of these political parties start all the way from the Atlantic slave trade, start all the way from 1776, start all the way when this first country brought in slaves or brought in indigenous servants. And said those things that they do atrocities toward mankind. All the bringing division, all the bringing of strength. And then all of a sudden we went through the slave trade, the sex plantations, the, the atrocities, the, 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 the brutalization. It's just not acceptable and contrary to the doctrine of Christ. And I'm trying to sit there and say to you, let us do the things that make for peace. Let us do the things that are puts into the doctrine of God. So that's what the study is about today. The fact is, let's not be duped. Because so many people have been duped. So many people have been deceived. So many people have lied to and tricked to do things and ignore the teaching of Christ. I'm saying is, let's see what, and I'm just saying it right now. Go by what the Word says. Does the Word tell you to discriminate? Does the Word tell you to hate? Does the Word tell you to not forgive? Or does the Word tell you to forgive? Does the Word tell you to love? That's the doctrine and teaching of Christ. And if you are operating outside of that, and you feel that it's okay because you're approved by man, I'm telling you, it's not man that's going to get you in eternal life. It's not man's doctrine. It's not political parties, not the color of skin, but it's the love of God. Follow the doctrine, people. Study to show yourself approved unto God. Hey, have a great, happy Father's Day. Joy, Juneteenth, tomorrow, 19th. Juneteenth, 19th. Tomorrow, reflect on it. We've got a lot of bad things went behind those people getting to the point where they can celebrate freedom. And then that's appropriate to be able to have a day of celebrating the, 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 the long so that we can celebrate the right that we're all free. And yet, even though we had to make an amendment, we're all free so that on the 4th of July, we can all say Independence Day. Every man being independent to choose. And God gives you the right to choose. And that choice is life through Christ. Amen. God bless you. Appreciate you listening. And we'll see you when we see you. And don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And I'll break this down to like A, B, C, and D, as always, so that you enjoy. So enjoy the study. And I'll see you when I see you. God bless. Bye bye. All right. God bless you. I hope that everyone is having or will have a happy Father's Day for all the fathers that are out there. Start off with the fact is, remember. We all have God the Father. Amen. <laughs> we all have God the Father. And, and we, those of earthly fathers, is we, we wish all of you a happy Father's Day. And I think it's a blessing uh, for the nation to come in uh, this country anyway to actually have a, a day where you recognize fathers just like you recognize mothers. You know, I guess eventually we'll have to say recognize. Uh, and I guess uh, 
talk to my father's day, we can talk about grandfathers as well, as uh, grandmothers. Uh, to this day, grandfathers and fathers. Uh, happy Father's Day. Uh, and remember, for us that are believers, and I always got to qualify that, because sometimes there's people who don't believe in Christ, don't believe in, 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 in the gospel. Uh, and then there's some who pretend they believe in the, the gospel. But we'll focus on that in a minute. The main thing is that God the Father, you know, I like John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. To whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. So our Father in heaven has definitely set up a, a window, a, a path to salvation. And what we're going to talk about today is that uh, one of the biggest concerns I have had is where people uh, who, I'm going to say, call themselves Christians, and, and yet they don't obey the gospel, they don't obey Christ, and, and has shut the door and have turned so many people away. And I want to say for those of you who you know, I think venture out and listen to, to ministries and platforms like these is, you know, I'm, I'm sorry for those who profess to be Christians, but really use it to um, pollute the gospel. And, and you know what, I'm telling you, when, when, as I'm giving you to study, when I talk pollute the gospel and, and try to really uh, change the gospel. So the gospel means what? Good news. But what do we see sometimes of people who actually preach bad news? That's, that's anti-Christ when you think about it. Because it's anti-teaching. Either we teach the gospel or we teach man. And I call it anti-Christ. And you, you're anti-Christ because you're not teaching Christ, right? You're supposed to teach Christ. You're supposed to preach Christ. You preach the gospel according to the word of God. And you don't preach the judgment of some of the people. And I'm telling you, religious people have done a great job in, in, in polluting the gospel to the point of trying to make us focus on the wrong things or ignore some other things, and what I'm talking about is ignore the fact is that God is trying to bring people in. I had a conversation the other day, and it was saying is, how can nationalism, Christian nationalism, be Christ's preaching opposed to Antichrist. Nationalism in itself implies a group of people that are nationalists toward themselves, recognizing themselves as a nationalist, recognize themselves as a distinguished, distinguished group that exclude others. Opposed to the fact is that see, the reason I call it Antichrist, and I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you right now, because Christianity is a world ministry to be called, commissioned by Christ to preach the gospel to the world so that everybody in the world can have an opportunity to receive the message of salvation and to come into the body. See, it's, it's not a wall in Christianity. If you want to talk about, you know, in our country, we talk about open borders. The gospel, the Christianity, is an open border. It's not a closed border. It is a border open hey, to, to, to a person that is a color, a person that is not a color. 
a person that is that African descent, a person that is European descent, a person that's South America, purpose is North America, purpose for, purpose for everybody in the whole world. See, we're not an exclusive group. Uh, we are a blessed group because we made a decision to receive salvation according to the will of God and to let everybody else know that even for you, the gospel is open for you. The door is open for you. I know I'm tired, sorry about these religious people that try to put so much stigma and making you feel unqualified and not even recognize that they're not even qualified themselves. None of us are worthy. I want you to know that. If you don't do that, none of us are worthy. No one has earned his salvation. And, and, and you know, we, we put, for religious people, they sometimes they put in there, they try to use those things of, of uh, going to a club, uh, partying, uh, they, they, the drinking, uh, smoking, and anything else that they feel that is a heart, that they, they feel is anti-cultural to what they believe is the norm. And, 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 and the same thing about it, that they use it as a weapon to use to discriminate, to condemn people and punish people, to hurt people, to justify you know, but, and I'm talking about you go all the way to, and, I'm, and as we go into this message, we're talking about all the way to the, the crusade. In other words, when, when they when the crusade, the Templars and stuff, went to Europe to attack, what you see there was Christianity being a militaristic organization to force itself and force and impose his will on a group of people that was not the teacher, which has never been the teacher of Christ. Spanish, the, the Spanish Inquisition, the Salem Witch Hunt, the Atlantic Trade, slavery, the, the Jim Crow laws. I'm, I'm telling you, even up to modern day systemic racism, are all being incorporated to pollute the gospel. Because when you sit there, and that's why I brought in earlier about Christian nationalism. And there's something called white Christian nationalism. All that is anti-Christ because Christ, the body of Christ, is the diversity of the world. See, because God created the whole world. Whether you like it or not, it doesn't matter to me. It matters to what it, the word says. And if you say things and doing things contrary to the word of God and the teaching of God, then you become an antichrist. And you need to change what you are. If not, understand where you're going because the Bible is very clear. Look at the title I have today. I thought it was interesting. This is this is the title, and and, and I, I, I selected this title because I am concerned. I'm really concerned. I'm concerned with the fact is, and you see the title down there, duped, which means to be tricked, deceived, to ignore the teaching of Christ. So you can judge and condemn others. Duped, deceived, tricked, to ignore the teaching of Christ so that you can judge and condemn others. So you can exploit others. So you can kill others. So you can discriminate against others. So you can do and judge and put down and ostracize and put people to the side because you believe that that is what the body of Christ is supposed to do. And you know what? It's been very effective to weaponize the Christianity to do what you want to do to people. 
I was sitting there. I mean, I'm, you know, we constantly look at the history. And, and, and I look at the fact is the audacity of people to think that they're Christians. And that's what I'm saying. Even when you talk about Christian nationalism, stuff like that, to think you're a Christian because you, you, you want to exclude people and not minister to people. And I hate the fact is that Christianity either endorsed, actively participated in discrimination and the, the lynching. If you ask yourself, the reason I said duped is the fact is how can you believe can you believe that a person who did lynch, who did beating of somebody because they're different, because of, you know whether they came from uh, Africa or Europe or, or whether they came from China or they came from Japan or, and, and beat them? because you think you're doing the will of God and you call yourself a Christian, you, <laughs> that's not the time. How do you put the love of God in the same category of hate and discrimination? And yet, the reason I put this title here is how could a whole nation, even up to this day, live in discrimination and hate towards brother and sister? How can you, even as a Christian, exploit and destroy the government or the, the, the environment or to ostracize people and, and, and deny them the ability to prosper, to sit there and give people the least, the worst conditions, and say that you you you, you preach in the gospel. That's what I'm trying to say. We I want people to know that when people do from this nation, beating somebody up because they're different. Because you don't like what they are. If you hate people, you be mean to people. The Bible said hate evil, but not people. Evil is 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 is, is, is actions that a person do. A person. And we gotta understand what is behind you know, if you don't understand there is a there is a uh, spiritual warfare. And, and the same thing that was used, that the devil used to trick Adam and Eve. He's, do you think those tools are not being used? The same tempter that tempted Christ. You don't think, is, do you not being tempted? You don't think the people who fall in sin are not under the influence of the tempter? So those people who did the, 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 the lynching, do you think that that was God-led or demonic-led? It was demonic-led. Those people discriminate. Those people try to redline districts and try to keep blacks out. You think that's God? Is you, anybody listening to me, listen to the words that come out of my mouth, believe that that is God? No. Those who sit there and, and, and take sticks and beat up somebody because they're different. I mean, you saw one study, the one one news episode where a lady had a hammer and was beating somebody that was Asian. And all because they think about the the the, the, the COVID-19 and thinking that somebody, you know, the Asian created it, it or it, you know, the point of fact, it originated from a particular country, that all of a sudden now you, you have the right to take a hammer and, and hit them, or you punch them, 
Do you think it's, you see what I'm saying is, the same thing people did because of people's color of skin? The same thing because the person is Jew that some, you know, that we just got a conviction this week where somebody shot up a, they shot up a synagogue, killed 11 people because of their being Jews. And his lawyer tried to sit there and say because of immigration. But the man was talking about Jewish people. But he was trying to say it because of it, the, the, the controversies of the, the, the war without security. They, he, went, he hated immigrants. Even though the man sat there and said he hated Jews. And went into their synagogue. This black, this people went into black churches. African American churches. And killed some because of the color of their skin. We need to recognize that a tree is known by its fruit. And then we got people sitting there talking about the people. Why are you saved? And then act like a devil to the devil. If you call ask about the saved. That's what I want to talk about today. And let's go into the study. And let's remember this. Yeshua is Lord. And all I want to do is, I want people to understand the gospel, the good news, is that he wants you to just receive salvation. And if you don't feel like you need to be saved, then, then we as believers accept your, your, your position. We don't have to agree with your position. We, we just accept the fact that, that you feel you don't need to be saved. That you got it going on. Or if you got a different religion, you got a different path that you think you want to go, you know, I, I can tell you that John 14, 6 said, Christ said, I'm the way, the truth, and life. Don't come to the Father, but I am. That's, that's what Christ said. But if you want to go another way, I, I'm not going to be angry with you because you're going another way. It's not for me to be angry because of the decision you made. It's for me to be responsible, making sure that you knew that you had a choice. And if you choose something different, you choose not to be believing God and everything else, I'm not gonna get angry with you, nor should any other believer get angry with you. You made a choice. God give us a choice. People have to choose salvation, right? I mean, it's, it's a choice. And nobody should get mad and angry with people or not try to play nationalism or anything else, but to say, hey, I love you regardless of your decision. I'm not going to put you down because of your decision. I accept you because God accepts you. Now, I ain't talking about did he accept you. He, he accepted every last, every last one of us to receive salvation. But if you reject them, you reject them, but you didn't reject them. I'm not going to choose that as a personal offense against me. And I'm trying to every believer, don't be upset because of people's choices. You can't make people choose. God is not making people choose. Why would you try to make people choose? And he that doubteth is damned if he eat, because he eat is not of faith. For whatsoever is not of faith is sin. And that's, that's what we want to close up with. And that's what I want you to remember, is the fact is we don't judge and condemn one another. We love one another. We work with one another. Amen? All right. So thank you for listening. We'll probably come to those scriptures again uh, next week, if the Lord's willing. But the fact is, don't be duped. Don't be deceived. Trust in God. Love one another. Encourage one another so that we can all meet on high. As all nations, all families, all tongues, all kinders. Let's not take the man construct, because man construct, social construct, can send you to eternal death. And I fear that so many people, especially since the Crusades, all the way up to now, generation and generations, I'm afraid. Some of those people are not 
not with the Father. Bible says, absent of the Bible says, absent of the body, present of the Lord. That's only if you're in the Lord. And the Bible says, the tree is no best for you. Amen? Hey, we all got things to work on. But the main thing we can at least work on is not to condemn one another, but encourage one another. That's what I want to say. God bless you. I appreciate you listening. And I'll see you when I see you. Have a great holiday. Happy Father's Day. Happy June 19th. Enjoy it. Reflect on it. And rejoice in freedom. It's for everyone. God bless you. Bye-bye. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you.